Okay, so it's been a few weeks since I last made a video and you may have noticed that some stuff has happened. Some stuff that has left me with a pretty weird feeling that's so unfamiliar that it took me a while to even realize what it was. The feeling that I've been experiencing is hope. Now, I know that people working on climate change have a complex relationship with hope, and it's not my place to tell anyone else how to feel. I know that I personally have flitted between climate change hope and climate change despondency, but I feel more genuine hope today than I think I ever have before for the climate, and I wanted to share with you why. Let's start small and work our way up. Well, to start with, as I've said before, including in my last video, climate change is not a binary choice between climate catastrophe and climate completely fine. Every little bit of warming matters, and so every single action we can take to limit global warming also matters. And when I started working on climate change, we were well on track for avoiding no global warming. I'm not really joking here, we were following the path of the worst case emissions scenarios that climate scientists were using. So okay, yeah, my expectations were pretty low. But today we are seeing some hints that the curve is starting to bend. Research shows that climate policies have avoided a certain amount of emissions entering the atmosphere, and thanks to future climate policies, we're no longer on track for this worst case scenario. Throw into the mix the decline of fossil fuels and the soar of renewables. So for example, solar is now the cheapest source of energy in history. And you've got a very different picture to what I encountered when I started working on climate change. Back then, it looked like fossil fuel use was just going to keep rising and rising forever. And now it looks inevitable that it won't. Okay, so things are not quite as terrible as they were a few years ago. This might not sound like a cause for hope, but remember that every bit of warming matters. And so these actions will save people's lives, will help protect the planet. Okay, but surely we can do a little better than things are not quite as bad as the worst case scenario. And actually, yeah, I think we can. Let's talk about what I think fairly can be described as the best case scenario. That is limiting global warming to just 1.5 degrees Celsius. This is the more ambitious target of the Paris Climate Agreement. At the time, a lot of climate scientists were debating whether even limiting global warming to 2 degrees Celsius was realistic. So yeah, that's just how ambitious this 1.5 degree target is. But we also know that limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius would be relatively safe, at least safer than higher levels of warming. It would help limit the rise in extreme weather events and help protect even the most vulnerable people, for example, people living in low-lying island nations. Okay, but why is it so ambitious? Well, because to reach it, we know we'd need to lower CO2 emissions to zero by around the middle of the century. So that means the entire world overall emitting zero carbon dioxide in just 30 years. To make matters worse, at the time that the Paris Agreement was reached, countries weren't really talking about zero emissions. So there was this contrast between what the Paris Agreement said it wanted to achieve and the action that clearly wasn't going to achieve it. As I said at the time, it felt like watching a school kid who says they want to get an A in their exams, but isn't bothering to do any of the hard work. Duh. But this has started to change. Countries have started to put forward their plans for net zero emissions, and plans which are roughly in line with this low warming scenario. And I'm not talking about just any groups of countries, it's things like the European Union, and even China. Of course, until recently, America has been a huge thorn in the side of meaningful climate action on the international stage. Trump has been pushing America in the wrong direction, including by pulling them out of the Paris Climate Agreement. But there was recently an election in America, and America's new president-elect, Joe Biden, has said explicitly that he wants to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement. Once America does rejoin, that will mean every country on Earth is a signatory for the Paris Climate Agreement for the first time since, well, since a couple of months earlier when America finally left. 
What you might not have heard, though, is that Joe Biden wants to set America on a path for net zero emissions, a path that would be roughly consistent with this 1.5 degrees Celsius temperature target. So we're looking at a world where the world's three biggest emitters, that's China, the US and the European Union, are all aiming for zero emissions. And this is why I genuinely feel some hope right now. For the longest time, the best I've been able to say is that things could be worse. But now for the first time, I feel like things are actually not bad, maybe. Now, the last thing I want is for anyone to watch this video and feel complacent. We still have a long way to go. Not least because it's much easier to say you want net zero emissions than to actually put in place the policies that would achieve it. Plus, there are many countries which haven't laid out plans for net zero emissions, including many countries which I don't think can at the moment without proper support. And look, I can't tell you whether when you watch this you feel hopeful or not, but I can tell you this. The case for climate change hopelessness has never been so weak. Thanks a lot for watching, and while you're here, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all these things that help the algorithm realize that this video is amazing. Okay, until next time, bye.